So let's look back at what was an absolutely extraordinary game. Where do you start? Well, England were 48 for one overnight, needing 258 to win. They were bowled out for 256. So New Zealand winning by just one run. It was an extraordinary finish. Jimmy Anderson caught down the leg side, just two runs away from victory. He looked absolutely crushed as Blundell leapt to his right and took the catch off. Wagner, who bowled brilliantly today, four for 62. He spent much of the series looking for his ball in the stands. He's been hammered absolutely everywhere. But he was the hero today, four for 62. Lots of short stuff flying around. Uh, not least, he dismissed Stokes and Root and also Broad through the bounce. So they all fell for that short one. And then Folks as well towards the end, who played so well for his 35. So a quick run through the card before I bring in uh, the other two. Robinson out for two, Duckett for 33, Pope 14. That was 80 for four. Brook run out without facing for naught. 80 for five. That was England losing four for 21. Then a stand of 121 between Stokes and Root, who made 95. Stokes, 33. He was the first one to go, falling for the short one, followed by Root, just one run later, out for 95. In comes Stuart Broad with 56 needed. He got 11, and then he was also out uh, to a short ball. Well taken by Wagner in the deep. 215 for eight. The pressure really on Ben Folks, who turned down lots of singles. We can talk about that with Jack Leach at the other end. In the end, he got so close. Anderson having to come in with a seven needed because Folks was caught out on the long leg boundary for 35. Leach made one not out from 31 balls. We've seen him do that before. Anderson pulled a four from Wagner. And as I mentioned, was caught down the leg side. Was the ball before it a wide? Anderson certainly thought so. I think lots of England supporters will think so. I'm not so sure, to be fair. It was a test match after all. Anyway, lots to talk about. New Zealand winning by just one run. That's only the second time in test history, by the way, that a team has won a test match by one run. And just the fourth time in test history that a team has won having followed on. So lots, lots to talk about. Stefan Schemmelt, lucky man, was there live watching it. Uh, I bet it was a brilliant atmosphere, wasn't there, Stefan, towards the end? I need to lie down. I need to lie down and a stiff drink um, from going through that. It was absolutely incredible to not just, I guess, the emotions of today and everything that we went through watching it and thinking that New Zealand had won it and then England won it, but also going right the way back across the course of this match. I mean, England were 21 for three on the first day before Brook and Root got going. Then um, it was their innings and it was New Zealand being bowled out and then England enforcing the follow-on. I think everyone, when, when we arrived today, thought England... Um, were favourites to win this game, that target of 258. But that first hour was absolutely calamitous. And when Harry Brook was run out without facing a ball, Joe Root just pushed the ball to third slip. We see Joe Root so often running the ball down to third man, taking mm. the single. I don't know if it, his mind had been slightly frazzled by a change in the field, but it went almost straight to Michael Brace while he picked the ball up. Do you know what I think, Stephen? I, th I think Root forgot the keeper was standing up. Yeah, he may well have done, yeah. And because he just the throw went straight to, to him. Yeah, and that was it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Brook was miles out. And Root had his head in his hands at the non-striker's ends. He knew what he'd done. He knew he'd made such a huge error. And then he batted like a man who wanted to make amends. It was such a counter-attack. He really got after the off-spinner brace well. At one point, he had 41 off 16 balls that he'd faced against Bracewell. And at the other end, the drama of Ben Stokes effectively batting on one leg mm. and not playing a shot. Remember the way that Stokes got out in the first innings? He was just slogging. This time, it was the determined Ben Stokes that we saw at Headingley in 2019 in the T20 World Cup final. When Root and Stokes started 50, Stokes had only made five of them. He kept edging it through the slips, over the slips, but he hung in there. And you thought England had this in their grasp. They needed 57 to win when they were five wickets down. And almost as a last throw of the dice... Um, Wagner went to a short ball plan and as you rightly say Aggers he's been panned everywhere in this series when he's bowled short but this time it was a match changing spell Stokes with that ugly swipe up in the air caught at square leg one ball later a root miscue he was caught at mid wicket he missed out on making a second hundred in the match that would have been the first time he'd achieved that in his career Broad came out we thought well he'll swing for the fences or get out he did get out he guided one to third man and then Ben Folks, the unflappable Ben Folks, carried England to the brink of it with Leach. He's got form, hasn't he, for those sorts of innings. You thought England had it in the bag. It turned again, and Jimmy Anderson shuffling out is one of the greatest moments of sport in theatre I think I've ever seen. And the biggest reaction in the press box was when he clubbed Wagner for four. You think, well, that's it, that's the game done. 
and there was a final twist. And the roar inside the Basin Reserve when the finger went up, when Anderson was given out, was absolutely deafening. I don't know what the split of supporters was. There was definitely a lot of England fans, but it felt like the ground was filling up um, when New Zealand got closer and closer to victory. It was free entry. What a magnificent atmosphere, a brilliant advert for Test cricket and one of the greatest sporting occasions you could ever see. Yeah, I think you're right. As, and Stephen, you've been watching it there on the on, on the on the couch. I mean, that, that, that was a truly great Test match all the way around, but a, a, a gripping day. Quite extraordinary, really, wasn't it? I think it actually plays into the mantra that this England team are looking to play with, and that's to purely entertain people. Um, yes, they care about the results, and they'll care about the results even more when that Ashes series comes round in the summer. Um, but purely looking at this, it was one of the most entertaining test matches I've watched, and it just felt as though there was always a twist and a turn around the corner. Um, those first two days, um, England was so far in the ascendancy, you didn't think that they could stuff it up from there with where they'd got themselves to. But we knew that at some stage in the series or in the game that New Zealand were going to turn up and they left it till the last half of the last test match. Um, and that battle between the two teams then was so topsy-turvy um, and resulted in that one-run win, which was truly extraordinary to watch. Yeah. What about these shots? Stokes, Root, uh, Broad, it goes Broad, that, but, but, and folks. I mean, we know what Wagner does. He's been doing it for years. He runs in looking angry. Bowls bounces. I mean, they're very well-directed bounces, but you know what's coming. You, you know all the field is out deep. I wonder how you feel if you get out to him. Well, I think Ben in his um, post-match interview said that he saw it as an opportunity to take qu 20 quick runs off the total to make it a, an absolute no-brainer that England would win. And I think that, yes, it may look ugly when he gets out like that and when Joe Root gets out like that. But I think the thing that is important is their clarity of thinking and their commitment to it. Um, and he truly thought that in that moment that the best way for him to help win that game was to try and take Wagner down for, for 20 runs in a two-over period that, that effectively would kill off the game. So, so yes, it can look ugly, um, but I, I actually have no qualms with it because of the manner in which they've played these last test matches. Um, they're staying true to that, and, and the clarity in which he said he saw it as an opportunity to try and win the game, um, I think can only be a good thing for the team going forward towards the Ashes because we need to play cricket on the front foot against Australia. I wonder how long Stefan took Jimmy Anderson to get off the field. We've seen it before, haven't we, against Sri Lanka? Almost, almost seeing out that draw with Moen at the other end. I think it was just two balls to go when he popped up a catch at short leg. And, and now this one as well. I mean, yeah, us number 11s, you know, it's not... It's not it's, it, you, you, do get these, you do get these moments, but I mean, he must have been devastated, wasn't he? This narrative of Jimmy Anderson hitting the win, winning runs in Test cricket has actually been, been bubbling along through the whole tour and through the whole Stokes McCullum era. I think it was at Edgebaston when England completed that chase against India when Stokes tried to complete Anderson, to, tried to persuade Anderson to put his pads on and go out and hit the winning runs because he knew that he's never done it. And in a press conference early on in this tour, I think it was before the Mount Monganui test, Anderson got asked, do you ever want to do that? And he said, no, why would I want to do that? I don't <laughs> like batting. I've got no interest in hitting the winning runs. And there, here he was. He had the chance to do it. Seven to win yeah. when he came to the crease. That four that he swiped off Wagner was incredible because the ball before, he'd fended off a brutal bouncer. He'd gone so far back onto his stumps, you thought he was going to knock the bails off with his foot that shot came out of nowhere it bulleted to the boundary and you thought this is it this is Jimmy Anderson's moment another mm. chapter in that storied career now Ben Stokes says that Anderson was smiling when he walked off because he was so pleased to have been part of that finish I didn't see it to me I think Jimmy was still stewing about that that wide or non-wide the ball before which I agree with you I don't think it should have been called a wide it was more a case of I think Wagner had had bowled a lot of short deliveries to Anderson both in that over and the previous over and those England fans amassed on the grass bank were getting on the back of the bowler and the umpire yeah well I mean, did, do you think it was a wide Stephen? Oh, well, the replay suggests yes and had it been outside of those last two overs um, 
they'd been pretty consistent in calling them. Um, we were in the studio, we were calling for Anderson to review it, to throw the tea towards Rod Tucker and say, <laughs> review that one. Whether he could have done that or not, I'm not sure. I don't think sure. you can do that, though. No, I'm, I'm not sure you can. No, no I don't think you can. It's um, easy to get suckered into sort of a one-day mode, though, isn't it, when it comes down to tight as that. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't think it was a test match wide, but but there we go. It's one of those things that, uh, that could be debated. Uh, Stefan, you've been busy talking to lots of people, so let's get some reaction. First of all, you spoke to Ben Stokes. Ben, that was incredible to watch. Yeah. What was it like to be a part of? Yeah, I mean, we, we got to obviously got to watch there the last sort of 45 minutes and see all that unfold. Um, but to be a part of that game was um, was amazing. To you know, for it to actually end up in this position after the first two and a half days is something that we probably didn't envision happening. But um, I've said it quite a few times already after the game. You know, the, the ground staff here have produced an amazing Test match wicket. I think it's one of the best ones that we played on in a very long time. Um, there was enough in it for the bowlers that spun and if you felt you got in you could capitalise and make some big scores like we've seen from both our lads and also the Kiwi boys so but yeah I mean being on the losing end of that game is is obviously disappointing but I think just yeah being a part of it um, was you know I guess just takes any disappointment away from losing it because you know that's what it's what you play a game. It's what you play Test match cricket for is to be in those moments, and um, we'd obviously love to be on the other side of it. But you know, losing games like that is what it is, isn't it? Did you think Jimmy had got it? Uh, yeah, I mean, especially when he cleared his front leg and Hoyt wags through there to get to two. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, Jimmy's obviously. I think watching him walk off, actually, I, I didn't know what Jimmy would react to because obviously he's been in those situations a few times before, and he's a bit let down and, and disappointed in himself but the fact he was walking off smiling I think made just sort of everything that you know we speak about and what we want to do just a reality because James Anderson was the one to get out with two to win but he's walking off smiling knowing that he's been a part of something unbelievable um, and everyone who turned up today here um, obviously free entry was great as well so I think our side and the Kiwi boys know that they've they've given everyone here who's turned up a great game to watch. Can you just talk us through the ebbs and flows of the Test match as a whole, from what Harry and Joe did in the first innings through to how you bowled and then the follow-on to, to how the game ended today? Uh, well, honestly, I, I thought it was always our game to, to, that we were in control of. Um, you know, the follow-on where you look at we've uh, our opening bowlers have run through their opening their top order three games uh, three innings in a row, um, and we wanted to keep putting the pressure on them. And, and we I knew that New Zealand would have to play pretty much the perfect game from that point onwards to to even get us into this position. Um, but chasing 250, it was our game to lose. Um, but other teams are allowed to play better than us. Um, they're an international team. And they've obviously got quality players with both bat and ball. And um, sometimes when you come out on the losing end, it obviously means that the opposition has been better than you. And, and this week, New Zealand have been better than us. But looking back on the winter, winning four games out of five is something that we can all go home with and, and be very, very proud of, um, You know, because that's not an easy thing to do. Even in defeat, this is what you say you want out of Test cricket, isn't it? For be entertaining for everyone who's come in and everyone watching or listening around the world. Yeah, and, and like when you take the the result and everything out of it, it just takes you know. But that doesn't mean for a second that we're not fussed about winning or losing. You know, we are disappointed when we lose, uh, and we also love winning because it's something that we always want to try and do. Something that we'll always give ourselves the best opportunity to do. And and if it doesn't work out that way, then we'll just hold our hands up and say we weren't good enough, or the opposition were better than us, and New Zealand were better than us this week. How's your knee? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it is. I'm not going to lie, it is frustrating knowing that I've got something hindering me uh, quite a lot. You know, not being able to fulfil the the four seamer role that I have done for a long period of time now, and um, you know, I was getting frustrated out in the middle there because I was, yeah, I'm obviously hurt at batting. But I've got a good opportunity with a few months out in India whilst the IPL is going on to, you know, really concentrate on making sure that when we come to the Ashes in particular, that I don't have to worry about it. Even though England have lost today, there are a lot of England fans that are very excited about the Ashes. What would your message to them be? Uh, yeah, stay excited. Um, you know, we'll the amount of time that we've had over the last 10 months and building what we've sort of you know created in terms of this new new ethos and the way in which we play um you know isn't gonna um change when you know the the pressure really does ramp up within the ashes um because that would just be a waste of 10 months getting a team into this position that we are now to then go you know even to go slightly back into our shell because of playing against australia in the ashes um, uh, wouldn't have done the last you know, 10 months any justice whatsoever um, so yeah I'm very excited um, but again Australia is going to be a new challenge and, but we'll be trying to meet them with 
everything that we have done with every opposition we played over the last 10 months. Well, that's Ben Stokes with Stefan, who then spoke to Neil Wagner. Neil, I can't get my head around what I've seen today. Can you? No, I can't, mate. It's uh, yeah, pretty special test, but yeah, uh, who doesn't think test cricket is alive? That's pretty pretty awesome. Um, just a yeah, pretty amazing uh, effort to get on the right side of it, um, but England played some, some serious cricket throughout the series. Was there a moment when you thought that match was gone? Uh, no, we always kept believing till the end. I guess um, game's never over till the lady sings, I guess, in the sense. But, um, yeah, I mean, England kept fighting and, and so did we. And, and yeah, it's just a great fight from the lads and, and finally got on the, on the, the right side of things. Um, they played a, a seriously good test match and, um, and I thought the way we fought back to get ourselves back in a, in a winning position was, was pretty good too. I mean, winning a, winning a test match after following on, that's only been done three other times in test history. Yeah, a very special effort. And like I said, full credit to, to Kane and, and Tom Blundell and Tim Salvi, the way they batted. And, and the pressure they put back onto to England and um, then the way we stuck at it with the ball uh, just kept hammering away and kept believing that we can make something happen and, and yeah, at the end of it we did so um, yeah, just, just a massive relief and, and uh, a pretty special test match Talk us through your spell, you kept running in, you kept banging the ball in yeah, I mean, there's um, some times during the series where I got a bit of punishment for um, doing that. Um, but yeah, well, again, a special mention to Harry Brook. I think he's a serious talent, the way he played it and how he got on with it. Um, yeah, he put you under pressure to keep doing it. Yeah, there's times where I felt a bit unlucky. These balls were just sort of felt in, in no man's land or a couple of drop catches or things like that. That's part of cricket and, and part of the game, I guess. So sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. And, uh, I guess this afternoon was just one of those where just, um, I guess, went your way and, and things just started happening. And um, it's sort of easy to get a, get around the lads and get on a high from there. So, um, yeah, it was pretty good. What about this as an occasion as well? Free entry at the Basin Reserve? Oh, it's a nice day. Sun's out. Uh, amazing crowd. I mean, I think the Kiwi support was outnumbered by English support at times. It sounded sound like we were playing in England. Um, that's another thing of playing England. The way they support, their supporters are amazing. Uh, the Barmy Army makes it pretty special. It was a great atmosphere, um, I guess, all the days from both test rounds. So, uh, yeah, uh, pretty amazing to always play against England and a special, special time, I guess. You've protected a proud, unbeaten home record in Test Series as well. Yeah, I guess it, it means a lot to us. Um, I guess any team is, is quite tough to beat at home and it's something that we're really proud of and want to keep obviously trying to, to maintain. And um, Yeah, like I said, England played some, some seriously good cricket over this period of time and uh, we kept fighting and, and things just went our way. Uh, it's, it's something, that, I guess, a, a great characteristic from this team and this group that we just keep trying to fight and, and find a way. And, um, and yeah, today it went our way. Test cricket alive and well? So much. Um, whoever watched that today and couldn't say they were entertained and enjoy that, um, I don't know. Uh, the way England play at the moment too is making Test cricket really excited too. So, um, yeah, uh, it's the pinnacle of the game for me. So, um, yeah, definitely more, more, more than alive, I'll say. Well done, Neil. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's Neil Wagner. Terrific effort that. Four for 62 from 15.2 overs. So what about the coach then? Brendan McCullum. Stefan spoke to him as well. Brendan, I can't sum up what we've seen today. Can you? No, not really. Um... I mean, I'll try. I think it was an epic encounter and, and exactly what, I guess, when we started out on this campaign, we endeavoured to achieve. Obviously, it would be nice to come out on the right side of it, but just to see a full house here at the Basin, probably millions all around, well, tens of millions around the world watching and listening and and seeing what was one of the great test matches is, is what this game's all about. And test cricket needs relevance and for two teams to play like they did and to to duke it out there at the end is, uh, is exactly what things are about. So, look, obviously it would have been nice to win, but... Gee, I'm just so proud of the boys for the fight and, and the, the application they showed right throughout the test match and right throughout the summer. Talk us through the emotions that the dressing room was going through as that final day ebbed and flowed. Uh, everyone was pretty calm, to be honest. I think, you know, again, the, the messaging from the skipper has been so consistent right throughout that this is what we're here to try and achieve. And yes, we want to win. Um, and ultimately, we'll always be um, judged on our results. But for us, the focus is about trying to play the style of cricket and to try and entertain people all around the world and you know I think that a it gives a sense of freedom it also b gives you your best opportunity for success and it didn't happen today but you know that you could sense within the dressing room there was still a belief and and uh, and also a bit of I guess proudness that we were able to stay true to that match right throughout. Now when you walked into Lords whenever it was back in May you said that you wanted to do this for test cricket you wanted to keep that relevance and you really are achieving that even in defeat. Oh, if you're going to say you're going to do something, you've got to do it, right? That's, uh, yeah, that's what we're here to do. And, you know, there'll be other people who sit in the position that myself and the skipper in, in time as well who may want to do things differently. But while we've got the opportunity and, and we've been given the honour to be able to achieve it, then you want to do it the way that gives you the most amount of satisfaction and, and what you believe is the best opportunity for your, your players to perform and, and to 
um, to be able to grow as people and players as well. And, and that's what we feel, and we're very consistent with that message as well. So but it's been a, a wonderful uh, home summer and now the away league of the summer as well. And I couldn't be prouder of what the guys have achieved, and they've grown so much as a group as well. They've grown really tight as a group, and I think we've seen some incredible performances throughout the year. Um, not just individually, but, but collectively. But for me, it's the togetherness which I'm most proud of. You talk about the group, and you guys have obviously had a good time on and off the field, both the Tour of Pakistan and, and here in New Zealand. Is it a little bit of a shame from your point of view that you're now gonna, not going to see them for a month or two? Yeah, of course it is. You're going to miss the boys, and, and you know we'll all miss each other. But I guess that's the, that's the gig with split formats as well, and, and that's, how, that's how it works out. We just have to mitigate the, the risks of losing what we have, the, bot, the, um, the bottled feeling that we have within the group at the moment by making sure we get together nice and early and spend a bit of time together and then start to plot and plan for what comes next. But yeah, it, will be, it will be sad to, to, uh, to not see the boys for a while, but we'll be in touch. Is that what you'd like to do before the home summer, get the guys together nice and early to make sure they're prepared for what's to come? Well, just try and spend a bit of time socially. I think it's, um, you know, before you get into the cricket, just the way it sort of sits at the moment with with how things have been separated, we find your natural rhythm just takes a couple of days to, to recalibrate. So that's that's the plan. We'll see where that is and, and what that entails. But, you know, for now we'll just be content with what we've been able to achieve over the, next, uh, over the last eight to ten months and, and then in time we'll start to plot our way forward to what uh, what the next challenge is. As your captain, there's a lot of people worried about that left knee. Yeah, look, obviously he's not moving that well at the moment, um, but the skipper writes his own scripts and he doesn't get a better stage than uh, than the Ashes to write one, so I'm sure he'll be he'll be sweet as by the time that arrives. Um, at the end of the Pakistan tour, you got a bit cross with us when we mentioned the Ashes. You said, well, come on, why can't we just enjoy this in the moment? Now, you've just mentioned the Ashes. Ben Stokes has just said he's excited. Are you excited? Yeah, bring it on. And bringing the urn home? Oh, I don't know about that, but we'll try and play the cricket that we want, and if that's the outcome at the end, then fantastic. But I know that we're going into it with a squad that, that believes in one another, and, and they've got a style of play that... We have a style of play which we um, will uphold right throughout and if Australia are too good for us, then so be it. If they're not, then, then we'll have the urn, I suppose. So there we go, finishing with Brendan McCullum, of course. Disappointed, I, I, of course, inevitably, to, to have tied the series and not to quite have won that test match. But it's been a pretty remarkable 12 months, let's be honest. Since Grenada, we talk about it a lot, don't we, and the, and the wreckage of English cricket then. Since then, they've won 10 and lost 2. Uh, and that's an absolutely extraordinary turnaround, I reckon. Stephen, I mean, I don't think we'd have, I don't think we'd have anticipated that, would we, from from, from that defeat in the West Indies? One ten no, lost felt two. Like, yeah, it felt like complete wreckage then, didn't it? And you're looking at the group of players and and wondering how they're going to go toe to toe with New Zealand and South Africa in the summer coming up, um, let alone take on an Australia team uh, this summer coming. Um, so to see the turnaround has been extraordinary. I think a lot of that or all of that is down to the clarity and the the, the path that McCullum and Stokes want to send this team on. Um, and they've been unrelenting in their messaging of that. And I think that that gives people clarity when it comes to going out there and playing. When you're stuck between two decisions out on the pitch, I think previously England have looked muddled and confused and unsure about how they want to play their cricket. Um, and I think the messaging that Stokes and McCullum have brought in have meant that even in a situation like today, where they lose a test match by one run, they'll be devastated. Yes, they'll be upset that they lost and they'll look when they review it about the moments in the game that they could have done better, that could have led to them winning. But there was a plan and there was good clarity about that plan. And I think that's what people understand when they're watching this team now is that they feel they can be aligned with something that's going on. And I think that that's very important and something that Stokes and McCullum have done expertly. Stefan, we've been obviously looking ahead to the Ashes. Can't help but do that. And one of the recurring themes, of course, has been Johnny Bairstow uh, and how he gets into this. I, I thought Ben Folks did himself a lot of good today. I, I, you know, I know it's, you know, it's one-off innings and he has actually played well in this series. Uh, he played well in Pakistan. He played well last summer. Um, he's kept wicket well. I, it just felt to me that that today's performance has just put away the possibility of Bairstow taking his place. So what are the thoughts? It can only be Crawley, can't it? 
I was going. I was just thinking. Please don't ask me what I would do <laughs> in order to get Johnny Bairstow, because I don't know. Is yeah. is the honest answer? And yes, you would think that Zach Crawley is most under pressure. Another man short of runs is Ollie Pope, who doesn't actually seem to be coming into this conversation very often. But I thought he looked skittish today, and he yeah. played a poor shot to be out when he was cutting Wagner for fourteen. But he seems to have been appointed as the vice captain. He may even captain a test match in the Ashes and we can talk about Ben Stokes' knee yes. in a moment if you like. But yeah, folks has had a very good game. When you think to the three dismissals that he had um, an effect on yesterday as well when he was standing up to the stumps to Stuart Broad that catch down the leg side off Kane Williamson the run out of Michael Bracewell. I think you'd be very brave wouldn't you to leave out the best or one of the best wicket keepers in the world mm. when taking a chance off Steve Smith or Marnus Labuschagne could be the difference um, between winning a test match or not. And you're right in the way that he batted. I think a few of us, when he was started to turn down the runs um, when he was joined by Leach, were thinking, is that the right way to go? It doesn't seem to be fitting in with England's attacking mantra. But one of the things that um, England allow folks to do is be himself. And of regular members of England's top seven since Stokes and McCullum took over, he's got by far the lowest strike rate and he just went about it in his way didn't he and he looked like he was going to get England over the line he is unflappable and he just made that one mistake that eventually let New Zealand in so Stokes' knee um, are we going to be covering a Stokes pulls out of IPL story at some stage I mean he really looked to be struggling uh, he is struggling and he was honest about it but he is going to the IPL he is adamant about that he was ready for the question um I, I heard i listened in on a number of different interviews that stokes gave he had a very well rehearsed line where he spoke about how frustrated he was um that he wasn't able to bowl his full overs in new zealand second innings but he was also said look i am going to go to the ipl i will be able to manage my knee through that it is a different job that i will be doing at the ipl i've already spoke to stephen fleming who will be my coach at the chennai super kings i know what i'm doing i will be fit for the Ashes, that seemed like a quite well-rehearsed line that Stokes wanted to to say. The other thing I thought that was interesting when, when Ben Stokes was reacting, and I think you will have picked up on this, Jonathan, all the different times that you've spoken to him throughout the summer, this idea that England want to take um, the result out of a Test match. It's all about the performance, and sometimes they're trying to say, oh, we're not bothered if whether we win or we lose. He was quite keen to clarify that today. Look, it's not that we're not bothered. Of course, I would have rather we won this game, but he was more trying to get across the point of how pleased he was that England had manufactured such a fantastic finish and a great advertisement for Test cricket. He spoke very well, Ben Stokes, as he always seems to do since he's taken on the captaincy. Yeah, that knee didn't look good though, Stephen. I mean, you know all about knees. (laughs) Um, I do. (laughs) You know, that, that didn't look great, did it? With the ashes around the corner. No, and and knowing how debilitating it, it can be, it's actually... The, the thing about the knee is that also it, it, make, it brings trepidation into your mind when it comes to fully committing to what you're doing when you're bowling. Um, and we know that Ben Stokes is a wholehearted cricketer, um, and I've no doubt that that's probably led to him being in the position that he's in with his knee, um, is almost not knowing when to stop sometimes in games. And we've seen him do many long spells uh, to drag his team back into the game. Um, and, and that's the talismanic player that, that people want uh, want to see Ben Stokes be, and, and he is being that as a leader and as a batter. Um, but his bowling is going to be a big part of that in the Ashes. So it's mightily important that he gets it right. Um, it, uh, he's going to see many ex I'd imagine, over the next few weeks before he goes to the IPL. Um, and, and you never know, he may um, this may be his line now or, or what his mind is at now. Um, but when he gets home and takes stock and, and has it rescanned and stuff, then he may change his mind. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a case of waiting and seeing. But certainly knees aren't that easy to um, to get right, um, especially when you're 31 like Ben Stokes is. Uh, so he's going to have to be very careful when it comes to managing how he goes about that to make sure that he's 100% fit for the ashes. Um, because we know Ben Stokes, the captain and the batter is mighty important, but him as the bowler is also so important for this team. Yeah, helps balance aside, doesn't it? Well, thank you both, uh, Stefan, and thank you for covering everything from uh, New Zealand for us. Uh, Stephen, oh, you better get to bed. <laughs> now, in a moment, we're going to hear from the top scorer for the Isle of Man, who are bowled out for only 10, the lowest ever score in men's T20 cricket, 
All of that after this. Hello, I'm Tony Bellew and I am angry. As I can't take it out on people in the ring anymore, I'm going toe-to-toe with some special guests to find out what makes them angry and, more importantly, how they deal with it. People think that, oh, you've got a boss life. You get to do what you love. Don't see the dark side of things. We're back for season three, and this time I'll be chatting to the likes of Michael B. Jordan, Paddy Pimlet, Duncan Ferguson and Boxy Malone. I didn't feel I should have been in prison. I wish the referee had given me a red card at the time because we wouldn't be talking about it just now. Tony Bellew is angry. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is the TMS Podcast. Just before we go, uh, here's a chance to hear an interview from Five Live Cricket last night, where Mark Chapman, along with Phil Tufnell and Michael Carberry, spoke to Joe Burrows. Now, Joe is a member of the Isle of Man team who recorded the lowest ever score in men's T20 history. As they were beaten by Spain, they were all out for just 10. Joe was a top scorer with four. Congratulations on the on the top on the top score, Joe. Buddy. Thank you for talking yeah, to yeah. us. Yeah, thank you. It doesn't happen very often. I can tell you that. <laughs> we ought to say we ought to say this game was the second of two on Saturday, wasn't it? That you'd played. Um, it was yeah. It was the sixth in three days. Um, so it was the last of our last game, uh, and you know I'd like to say it, it shows with the uh, the result, but. Uh, to be honest, it was <laughs> just one of those days, I think. Because <laughs> uh, in the earlier game, you you posted 132 for eight from your from your 20 overs. So, I mean, you, you'd got a decent total in the earlier game. Yeah, yeah. I think we just got... We, we had been steadily improving uh, on the batting front um, as the game sort of went on, uh, uh, which obviously was brought to a crashing halt in that last game. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, while we were on the rise, it was a, it was a, a nice feeling. What were Joe? What, what what was that dressing room like? I mean, you were probably out there in the middle for your glorious four, but I mean, it must have been chaos, mustn't it? Yeah. Well, we were actually we were sat in uh, sat in the gazebo. Uh, Spain in February is not as as hot as you might imagine. It was absolutely Baltic. Uh, none of us were out there long enough to get warm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it wasn't a lot going on. I think at the end of the game, someone said, I think we were a few runs short there, boys, and that kind of summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are having a little bit of a laugh. We're having yeah. a lot of a laugh here, Joe. And, and I hope it that's happened. all right. I mean, were you all able to laugh about it? Yeah, yeah. We, um, it was a bit... A bit <laughs> we were a bit down uh, to start with, but... Um, we we were granted um, we were granted a pint in the pub afterwards, which we don't do when we go away. You know, we take things very seriously. But I think, given the uh, given the circumstances, uh, the manager bought us all a drink, and I think somebody made a jab at my economy, and the tension broke, and we were kind of laughing and joking around. So <laughs> um, we're back to back to a tight we're a tight knit bunch, really. So uh, we'll get through it together. <laughs> yeah, it happens to what, the best, uh, mate. It happens did... to the best. What I didn't realise was when I when I gave the score at the start of the show, saying Spain won by ten wickets, going to thirteen without loss, when you were were all out for ten. What I didn't realise was that that was only it was only off two balls because the first ball that you bowled in in their run chase was a no ball. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> 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 Chappers, you're I mean, a hard man. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. A I just can't imagine the what. There, <laughs> well, so, oh, I, ju- I just can't imagine what you're all like down, in the man. field uh, yeah. after well, after the after the no ball. I can I can tell you that I, I usually bowl left arm over. I thought oh, I'm gonna have to try something a bit different here. Left arm round. I had three slips, uh, and. We would just just see if we could take one of them with us. Uh, as you can see, didn't quite go to plan. Um, <laughs> as I watched the ball sail over my head a couple of times, uh, it was the quickest I've ever <laughs> quickest I've ever been uh, back off the field. Uh, hopefully, we'll never have to repeat that again. No, good man. Um, it, it also on the serious side, you know, as you say, you're, you're a close bunch. You're a serious bunch. You're an affiliate member of the ICC now, or were in 2004, an associate member in 2017 so so the games you're playing at the moment are sort of european regional qualifiers is that it for for t20 um, world cups 
Yeah, so last summer we went to Finland and I think I believe there were three uh, throughout sort of Europe, um, sort of European qualifiers. And I think at the time we were 77th and we won four out of our five games. We lost to Italy in the sort of knockout final thing. So, you know, we, we have been improving greatly in the last 18 months or so. And we came up against a Spain side who were... Uh, they were they were better than better than us in all departments. Um, you know, hands up, they were fantastic. Uh, but you know, as you say, we can only learn from it. And a lot of our boys are back at school tomorrow, so it'll be a good story for them. Wow. And they only get they only get better <laughs> from from yeah. playing in those sort of uh, conditions. You must you must have in all seriousness as well. I mean, you must have some real experiences here then in in all sorts of interesting places that maybe you wouldn't have thought cricket was being played yeah no absolutely we i think we played uh we played turkey serbia romania and cyprus um in our sort of lead up to playing against italy so it's just nice to see cricket emerging in regions where you wouldn't necessarily expect it we're obviously quite close to quite close to england so in uh, cricket kind of permeates a lot of a lot of what we do, um, but in you know places like Turkey, you, you don't quite expect it to have yeah. taken on sort of the following it has. It's nice to see. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you for being such a good sport and, and coming <laughs> on. Uh, it's it's much appreciated, Joe. Thank you. No Thanks, problem. Joe. Thank Take you. Care. Keep going. Cheers, mate. Joe. Cool. Joe Borrow. Uh, hey, after being involved man. in that Isle of Man game, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, <laughs> that one wasn't meant as a le- it wasn't meant as a left jab that <laughs> Michael it really wasn't man. you are horrible it was 